Magazine. It's a radio show that caters to your healthy lifestyle, physically, emotionally, spiritually. It's fun, engaging, and entertaining. Welcome to Morning Coffee and Health, brought to you by Doctor's Choice Coffee. Now, here are your hosts, Paul and Dr. Thompson. So wake me up. Welcome to Morning Coffee and Health. I am Daphna Thompson, and I'm with my great host, co -ho your co-host, my co-host, Paul Thompson. And on today's show of Morning Coffee and Health, we are talking about innovation and trends in healthcare. We have a great guest who... Uh, is a doctor and has an incredible background. Before I share that with you, I'd like to introduce him. Hello, Dr. Tippett. Welcome to the show today. Hello. Thank you. And Dr. Tippett is with the company Data Motion. Uh, Peter, Dr. Peter, if you don't mind, I'd like to share with our uh, listeners a little bit about you, and then we can uh, learn more about Data Motion and what it is you're doing there. Yes, and just Perfect. looking at your bio, this could take the whole first segment to give all this history. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. It is. So bear with me, but you've got to you've got to hear this. So Dr. Peter, with us today, uh, Dr. Peter Tippett is co-chairman and an investor in Data Motion Health. He's also a member of Data Motion's da board of directors, and the former chief medical officer for Verizon. Uh, where there he led innovation, the Innovation Incubator. Previous to that, he was Vice President of Security and Industry Solutions for Verizon's Global Enterprise Unit and co-founder of CyberTrust, CEO of NCSA, founder of True Secure, a large security services company, as well as founder and CEO of Certus International, where he pioneered now widely used technologies such as the Rescue Disk. Um, Dr. Peter Tippett has also served as chairman of MDIT, a health IT company. He oversaw the Enterprise and Security Products Group at Semantic and created the first commercial antivirus product, later known as Norton Antivirus. Oh, but there's more. <laughs> <laughs> From 2003 to 2005, Tippett guided U.S. efforts in health IT and security by serving on President George W. Bush's Information Technology Advisory Committee. From 2012 to 2014, he was a member of the Clinton Health Matters Initiative and later named by InfoWorld as one of the 25 most influential chief technology officers. He won the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award and was publisher of Information Security Magazine for its first six years. My goodness, welcome again, Dr. Peter. What a fascinating didn't background. Anything about doctoring in there. <laughs> yes. So. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, that's the, right. The more, no, no. the more fun piece. Yeah, please. Yeah. And, and can you believe it? He's also worked as an emergency room and helicopter physician, uh, holds a California physician and surgeon license, and has earned both a PhD in biochemistry and an MD from Case Western Reserve University. So well, you can call me Dr. Doctor if you want. Okay. <laughs> well, well, all applause to you. Uh, it's great to have you with us today, and, and uh, I think our, our listeners really are interested in what you have to say. Uh, please tell us a little bit about data motion. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, the, the um, I had a passion for a long time, uh, not just about technology. That's where the, you know, the high-tech Norton antivirus and the, the rest of the changes in the world of high-tech have uh, Driven all of us in the world, but obviously healthcare is uh, you know is near and dear to all of us. Everybody is a patient at one point or another, and and it you know all of us whenever we encounter the health system, we come away feeling that it could be a lot better, right? We all hate filling out that clipboard every single time we walk into the doctor's office. We all hate sorting through the insurance bills. We all hate you know, trying to figure out what the doctor knows or what they don't know. And, and uh, you know, and, and it's, a, it's a kind of a mess what, you know, how our current system works. And uh, when you compare health uh, and the way the health system works to the way the financial system works, most technologists, the healthcare technology, 
is 10 or 15 years behind the same sorts of uses of technology in banking. So I don't mean the gizmos that measure your blood glucose and all the wonderful scientific things that we do in healthcare. They're all bleeding edge. But the way we use computers and the way we communicate with uh, between hospitals and patients and doctors and the caregivers and all that uh, is is considerably uh, more poorly done in healthcare than it is in almost any other industry. Uh, and being in high tech and in healthcare, uh, I've spent a long time trying to figure out how to make that better. The committee you mentioned uh, in the Bush White House that was called the PTAC, the President's Information Technology Advisory Committee. The, what Bush was uh, working on, uh, like all presidents, is trying to figure out how to reduce the growing cost of health care, and there's only so much beating up you could do of pharmaceuticals and insurance companies. You know, his basic question boiled down to, isn't there something we could use computers to do to reduce the cost of health care? And that committee worked for two years with subpoena power and all kinds of wonderful National Science Foundation kind of work, really, really smart people, and uh, came up uh, you know, with a pretty simple proposition that said if we could only get health care to use computers and networks and communication the same way that banking does, uh, only three things would happen. One is everybody would be dramatically healthier and live longer. The second is that the cost would go down wildly. Our estimates were that the cost of health care to America would go down by something like $70 billion a year. Since then, other uh, scientific groups have looked at it and think the number adds another zero, more like $700 billion a year is what, uh, is what the more recent studies suggest. And we'd have an entirely new kind of science. But other than those three things, it's probably not worth doing it. <laughs> mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Data Motion is uh, one of the uh, dream sort of companies of mine, that uh, which is organized around just making it easy for clinicians to talk to other clinicians and for clinicians to talk to patients, and vice versa. If you if you think about it, you know th th we have all this nonsense where the doctor sends you a message that says please log into some other thing, or go to the portal and look and see what happened and. You know, everybody's got two or three or five or ten different places to log into just in healthcare. Right. And none of the stuff is actually there that you really want anyway. <laughs> it's none of it is easy enough. I mean, why can't somebody just send you a message? <laughs> send it in your email or send it something easy that you're used to. Uh, and so the point of data motion is to make it so that clinicians can can talk to each other easier. That's called care coordination so that one doctor can tell another doctor what's going on. In the past, this was all, uh, you know, a doctor would call the other one up and say, hey, I've got somebody I'd like you to look into. She's got diabetes and hypertension and this and that, but I'm particularly interested in this other problem she's got that you're a specialist in. If you can help me work out that particular piece, that'd be great. And that's how consults work. Uh, you know, there'd be a phone call or a letter was written from one clinician to another. And frankly, well over half of all messages between clinicians today, today, are U.S. mail or U.S. fax. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, uh, and, and uh, although there's a big move to electronic medical records, that still hasn't solved the problem of, of getting messages back and forth between different facilities or between your doctor's office and the big hospital or between any of them and you at home. Right. You know, we're kind of closing up on this first segment, but, you know, I recently uh, read a story about a nurse who was so frustrated and just trying to get the right information about a patient very quickly to the doctor, quickly sent him a text message, and she was uh, immediately fired that same day for not using the secured systems that were supposed to be in place, which wouldn't let her do what she needed to do to kind of get this information in a timely fashion. So when we return, uh, maybe we can dig a little bit deeper into data motion and how you see this working, especially with the fractured healthcare system we have where a patient's moving from one system to another system in some cases. Perfect. All right. Well, we're talking with data motion and it's co-chairman uh, and investor and Dr. Peter Tippett will be right back. But first, uh, this hour is brought to you by Doctor's Choice. It's the coffee that loves you, bringing you great health benefits with lots of antioxidants, minerals, low acid, 
And it's really innovation in a cup. Go to doctorschoice.coffee. You'll find three blends there, one for supportive memory, one to help you in support of weight loss, and another if you're on the premium, li- uh, sorry, if you're on the paleo lifestyle, we've got one for you too. Doctor's Choice, it's a great coffee. Pick one up today uh, online. Go to doctorschoice.coffee. We'll be right back with Morning Coffee and Health. Now's the time to step into Chet's Shoes for non-insulated, waterproof footwear. We feature boots and shoes in safety and regular tone. You work hard for your money. Make sure it works for you by buying quality footwear that lasts longer so you can spend your cash on other things you enjoy. Your time is valuable, too, so ask your supervisor about our mobile truck service where we bring the store to you. Visit us in Columbia Heights and our Red Wing stores in Circle Pines, Coon Rapids, Bloomington, and St. Cloud. Check out Chet'sShoes.com and like us on Facebook. Remember, if the shoe fits, you Chats. This is Jack with Wellness Radio. Well, I first tried Doctor's Choice Coffee when I met Paul and Daphna Thompson, the founders of Doctor's Choice, and we sat down for a little taste test, and I remember the first thing was I just noticed how good the taste was. And then I really noticed the texture was different. It was much smoother. It kind of felt like tea going down my throat rather than coffee, but the coffee taste was there, and it was really good. Normally, I'd add some creamer and a little bit of sugar. Now, with Doctor's Choice, I don't feel the need to put anything in. When I used to drink traditionally roasted coffee, I would definitely feel acid reflux 80% of the time. With their infrared roasting process, I don't feel any acid reflux at all. So now when I'm at home or when I'm at work, I'm drinking Doctor's Choice and I'm loving it. So check it out for yourself. Look at doctorschoice.coffee. That's doctorschoice.coffee. It's the coffee that loves you. And here's one of their happy customers. My name is Dan O'Gara. I own O'Gara's Bar and Grill in St. Paul. If you're looking for a roof for your business, or I would, I would call Paul Fisher. I really believed in the product that they were using. I actually talked to, to Tim, the owner, uh, right from the first phone call. After meeting with him, I got his quote, and it was a little over half what one of the quotes was. So it was substantially less. They were in and out of there in three days, and... When they left, every day they left, everything was picked up. It was like you didn't even know that they were there. Tim is a guy you can trust. They do stand behind their product, and and I think that they they sell a really high-quality product. Fisher Roofing, online at 800A1Roofs.com. The Fat Roof Pro. Look for Rufus, our roof dog. This is Don Stevens of MercyShips.org with the Mercy Minute. Two women, Sophie and Oriette, sat in the ward on board our hospital ship and shared stories about their children with a crew member. Their children had received a free surgery on board the Africa Mercy the day before. The crew member asked, what is your favorite memory of today? Surprisingly, they both had the same answer. Their favorite memory was the way the Mercy Ship staff took care of them. They appreciated how everything was laced with love, the big things and the little things, the way people always tried to make them comfortable. Ariette worded it simply saying, they cure with love. And what a compliment for following the 2,000-year-old model of Jesus. Now you go and demonstrate your love for others by showing mercy to someone today. This is Don Stevens of MercyShips.org, bringing hope and healing to the world's forgotten poor. Thanks for staying with us. You're listening to Morning Coffee and Health, and today's program is Innovation and Trends in Healthcare. So welcome back, Dr. Tippett. It's it great having you on the show. And... We left the last segment uh, starting to talk about, you know, the challenges that the healthcare professionals are having, just trying to get information in a timely fashion. And I know there's there's something you've been very involved with uh, in the Health IT Triple AIM initiatives over the last several years, uh, which is my understanding is improving patient care, improving overall population health, and then also reducing that you know per capita health care cost. All three of these things obviously very, very necessary. But if all three of those aren't happening at the same time, you're not really improving the system, I believe. But, you know, it, it seems like the government who's pushing us toward 
a lot of these uh, you know changes and improvements that came along with what people call Obamacare, and then some of the same regulations they have around patient privacy and the inability to get us a unique patient identifier have all kind of kept us from getting there. So the frustration of this nurse that I mentioned who quickly texted the doctor something really critical for trying to help save a patient's life cost her her job. How do you see all this working, and how's data motion really putting a system in place that you know, allows uh, the security and transfer, but in a timely fashion? Well, that's a perfect uh, uh, question, and really, the, the you know, you just described the problem, but also what everybody wants. What we want is for our clinicians to talk to each other and to us, and we want for them to do it in a way that you know that we won't have our privacy violated, we won't have hackers in there, we won't have any of the rest. So we want both security and privacy at the same time. Uh, and oddly, the whole reason we have HIPAA, the health regulation that has to do with privacy and security, um, is because clinicians have long worried about the security of email and the security of computers. They worried about it before HIPAA was born, and HIPAA was born to to improve the P. And HIPAA is not privacy; it's portability. It's about interoperability, and and uh, and so the HIPAA was written in order to make it easier for people to communicate more securely and to talk more with each other and their clinicians to share data. It didn't seem to work out that way, but that was the the reason it was written. The person who wrote HIPAA is named Dr. Bill Braithwaite, also an MD PhD, and he's also on the advisory board of Data Motion. Uh, uh, the the the, the theory of of of, uh, of the transition of healthcare uh, messaging has been for the last 15 or 20 years that we'll get patient data put into electronic medical records, um, and each hospital and, and physician's office will have these. And the electronic medical records will share with each other through these things called health information exchanges so that if a clinician needs your record somewhere, uh, they could tap into one of the health information exchanges and get what they need uh, and everything would be great. So you, we call that pull because the doctor is pulling the information from a central repository. Uh, in the rest of the world, we have uh, uh, pull things like if you're going to go get yourself a, a, a schedule on a flight, you go to a you know to a Expedia or whatever, and uh, and figure out what flight you want and get the information and set yourself up. Um, but we also have push. If somebody asks you, you know, what's the best restaurant, you send them some information. Or if they ask you for a report that you created last month, or if they ask you for some information, you tend to send it to them. And we send things typically through email. Computing, we balance some things which are set up as central repositories and other things in which we push information to each other. And in healthcare, the part that's not working at all is this push method. Um, it's possible for doc clinicians to send things to each other, but generally it only works inside of the same, say, hospital or, or physician's office. So Data Motion has put together a mechanism using national standard secure mechanisms, all, all compliant with HIPAA and a bunch of other regulations. There's a total of seven different regulatory regimes that regulate all this. Uh, and there's, I think we have 800 documents worth of proof that we have to go through for auditing to make sure this stuff is all compliant and private and secure and tested and all the rest. Um, but uh, but the, for the user, the idea is to make it as easy as sending an email or as easy as receiving an email. In fact, in is it can actually show up in an email system that already exists. But what we've got is a mechanism at Data Motion in which that thing that might start out as an email winds up in the electronic medical record appropriately, or it might start out in the electronic medical record and show up on somebody's mobile app. We've got a partner, for example, called DocSnap that's helping families. So the mom, for example, in a family might want to manage the five kids and the, and the grandma and the you know two other people's health records and move them around and manage their schedules and did you get your vaccinations or not and what you know all that and keep the records handy on on her mobile phone 
and send them to the clinician or the next office that needs it, including blood tests or results or x-rays or whatever. Uh, and so that's all powered by data motion because data motion can handle moving big things and little things, can handle getting them between mobile apps and big electronic medical records, can handle getting it to and out, in and out of things like email. Um, if the email system the user is using isn't secure enough, then data motion provides an alternate one that's always available that you can get to through a web browser. Um, but the idea is to connect any system to any other system and make that connection happen for the enterprises quickly. Uh, we just hooked up a giant insurer, uh, one of the top three brands in the country, and it only took them 15 hours to connect our system to their giant back-end systems. Uh, that's very common to have very rapid integration like that and at the same time have this capacity to hook all doctors uh, to all other doctors, whether you're in the same state or not. Exactly. Uh, or or anybody else, yeah. And that's really the fascinating piece about it, at least to healthcare providers and for patients too. And it sounds like you're, right. and, you're allowing them to use ahead. the tools they like to use. You know, I know a lot of physicians are, they love Apple tools, they love iPhones, they love iPads. And, you know, and sometimes in hospital systems, they have two sets or three sets or even four sets of devices, depending on what system they need to talk to, because they have to be part of, you know, that closed loop system versus kind of more open. It sounds like you're kind of breaking down those barriers with data motion. Right. And there's a there's a scheme called direct. It's a kind of a dumb name, but it's the name of the scheme, uh, direct messaging. Um, that is government approved and it allows for strong security and privacy and all electronic medical record systems have to be able to speak this language. It turns out that everybody who g got their grant money and their rewards for making meaningful use of electronic medical records, which is 90 plus percent of all hospitals in the country, have proven that they, their system can do this. But the, the, virtually all of them sent one or two messages over the system to check the box and prove that it worked, and then they don't use it. <laughs> and they don't use it is because, like any communication system, uh, they have to have somebody to send something to, right? The other end has to have direct as well, not just your end. So this doesn't work until everybody has capacity to do it. Um, and one of the innovations that Data Motion has is we've, uh, in order to send a secure message, it isn't good enough just to encrypt it. Uh, or to make sure that the systems on both ends are <clears throat> secure. The, what, what really makes security work is to know who the person is that's receiving it and who the person is that's sending it. You know for sure it's the right Dr. John Smith or for sure it's the right Betty Boop that's getting the message as a patient. And, and that knowing who it is that's getting it is called identity management. That's all part of doing a good job of, of uh, security and privacy. And uh, getting that both done well and done easily is a particular trick uh, because if you spend, you know, if you have to go do the equivalent of getting a passport just to send a message to your doctor, that's too much work, right? Right. <laughs> so we've built a system so that hospitals, we've got a few big hospitals using this now where the uh, the hospital app uh, uses our system, although the patient doesn't know that. And they could, for example, point their camera from their mobile phone at their driver's license and insurance card and instantly are registered in the hospital. But at the same time, they've got a direct address and they can receive messages uh, for pre-op surgery or whatever, and those messages can have all the medical information and then they don't they, they can carry big secrets or instructions or anything else they can go in both directions and oddly enough this can for some messages they, they can be charged they, they don't get a full fee out of it but the, the clinician can actually have a patient encounter out of what boils down to messages back and forth through through what feels like email you know wouldn't it be nice to be able to go see your doctor without ever leaving your house if all you really want is to get your prescription renewed and answer three or four questions. Uh, this Indeed, is yeah. among the more common things we do in life. <laughs> right, right. And I can see where that plays into the $700 billion cost reduction over time. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that identity management that you mentioned extends down to the patients also? Yes, and that's one of the innovations. The, uh, the, in the world today in America, getting the kind of strength of identity uh, for a doctor has, has in the past cost about $100 worth of work. 
And in the data motion world, we've gotten that down to about $10 with a bunch of automation. So there's a huge uh, uh, savings there. But more than cost, it's the ease of use. If, if, uh, you know, if, if it takes you an hour to, or a day or a week or a bunch of time, you have to go to a notary, this is the way the world has worked. No wonder we all don't use systems like this, right? right? If you have to do the equivalent of getting a passport before you can use it. Um, so the, you've got to innovate not only on making it interoperable with all the various systems, making it easy for patients, making it work with apps, but also making it so that it's uh, significantly easier and cheaper than any other way to go. All right. So we, at Data Motion are hooking up a way to basically be the infrastructure for anybody's uh, uh, innovation in healthcare so that those innovations whether they're mobile apps or devices or glucose meters or whatever they are, can talk to other things and make it all, all that communication layer work. All right. Well, we're, we're going to continue on with this conversation uh, with Dr. Tippett when we come back uh, by taking just a short break. You're listening to Morning Coffee and Health, brought to you by Doctor's Choice. We're here today with Mary Ellen of Woodbury talking about Doctor's Choice Coffee, the coffee that loves you. Now, Mary Ellen, how long have you been drinking Doctor's Choice? Uh, For just over a month now. I've loved coffee for over 50 years, and I've tried lots and lots of coffee. So what's been your experience with Doctor's Choice Coffee? I normally put cream and sugar, but after a few sips, I was convinced that this was so smooth and tasty that I didn't need any cream or sweetener. There is no bitter aftertaste and no parched feeling in my throat. I've heard that it's something in the way that they roast the beans. Right, so they roast their coffee using using a slower infrared process that doesn't burn the natural flavor out like conventional roasting does. Also, this process is what eliminates the bitterness and parched throat. So the full flavor stays in the beans, and the lack of bitterness allows you to enjoy the full taste of this premium bean from Panama. Doctor's Choice Coffee tastes great and is good for you. You can get any of their three blends at doctorschoice.coffee. Doctor's Choice Coffee. It's the coffee that loves you. Trust me. When you're in pain, you need the Good Feet Store. Don't suffer from foot pain, sore ankles, tired legs, achy back and hips, or sore knees. Go to the Good Feet Store for your no-obligation custom fitting and immediately feel the difference. That nagging pain in my lower back, gone instantly thanks to the Good Feet Supports. The Good Feet Arch Support System is designed to put your feet in an ideal position, redistribute body weight more evenly, and help relieve pain and stress. I tried the Good Feet Arch Support System, and my hip pain is gone, went away. Now two locations, Maple Grove and Bloomington, with over 350 styles and sizes to relieve your pain. I could never do a knee bend. Now I can do a knee bend. I'm working out, and it's just wonderful. Call Good Feet at 855-554-3338. That's 855-554-3338. Or better yet, visit the Good Feet store in Maple Grove and Bloomington. Step in to pain relief. Thanks to the Good Feet store. This is Don Stevens of MercyShips.org with the Mercy Minute. Many of our crew participate in Mercy Ministries in their free time. One group visited a senior center in the Republic of Congo. Volunteer chaplain Andrea Diallo described her experience. These wonderful, beautiful elderly people had been discarded by their children, but they had so much joy, so much life, so much energy and they would share their wisdom. The director of the center said our visits made her able to press forward in what she was doing as a missionary in her own country. This reminded me that if we encourage one person, especially a person with a servant's heart, that maybe, just maybe, they will affect thousands. Encouragement is a powerful act of mercy. Now you go show mercy by encouraging someone today. This is Don Stevens of MercyShips.org, bringing hope and healing to the world's forgotten poor. All right, we're back from our short break. This is Morning Coffee and Health with Paul and Daphna Thompson on today's program, Innovation and Trends in Healthcare, brought to you by Doctor's Choice. It's the coffee that loves you, and why don't you go and compare the difference to see why it loves you so much? There's a lot of reasons, but I'll give you one very important one right now. 
uh, if you know somebody that's had cancer or if you have ever, ever uh, wondered about the risk of reducing the chances of cancer, especially when it comes to your diet, well, we know coffee is a staple for many of us, and it's something we drink every day or throughout the day. Um, so what's so unique about Doctor's Choice is that there are no carcinogens as a result of the roasting process, and that is because the roasting process is very unique in that it creates no acrylamides during the uh, cooking of the bean to uh, bring you fresh, roasted, full of flavor uh, cup of coffee with added boosts of healthy ingredients. You can read up on this by going to doctorschoice.coffee. And under innovative coffee, you can read about infrared heating process uh, that uh, gives you more on what I was just sharing. So if you love coffee, try it out. All right, uh, we're back with our guest today, Dr. Tippett of Data Motion. Yeah, thanks for staying with us, Dr. Tippett. Uh, it's been a great conversation so far. Uh, we were talking um, a little bit about uh, enabling that push, which is something that hasn't been done really well yet, and Data Motion's really helping with that. Maybe you can you know, expand on those push services um, and just tell us what all is needed there from your perspective and, and how that actually works. Yes, well, you know, in order for uh, somebody to send somebody else uh, a message of any sort, the other end, the other end has to have, you know, what the world calls an address. In your phone world, you've got a phone number. In your email world, you've got an email address, uh, and so you need to have something to send the message to. Uh, and in the world uh, that we're talking about, the 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 protocol we're talking about is called a direct address. Right now, it's uh, only uh, it's, it's it's something south of a quarter of clinicians actually have a direct address, and if you get past doctors, it's something south of 10% of nurses or nurse practitioners or respiratory techs or other sorts of people that are part of the care circle or the care coordination. Uh, and you know, if, if this is going to work, you want it to be as ubiquitous as telephone numbers. Uh, or email addresses, and as easy as all of that. Uh, and so uh, at, at Data Motion, we've organized a way to make the creation of these things be automatic. Uh, we've actually got sort of a patent on how to create accounts before the user even uh, tries to use it, uh, and, uh, and ways to make it so that the person can send a message to another person before the second person even knows that the system exists. Wouldn't it be neat if you could send a message from one doctor to another or from a doctor to a patient, for example, where the, the patient or the second doctor doesn't even know that this system exists, and yet by, but the, the message will show up, for example, on a fax, which the doctor does have, or it'll show up as a text on, on, the, uh, on their phone or as an email, uh, and it'll say, hey, there's a doctor, uh, Smith has a message for you, uh, you know, do one more click to get all signed up and spend another, you know, 10, 10 or 20 or 40 seconds at this. And not only can you get this message, uh, the message might be an x-ray or it might be an EKG or it might be a note or it could be instructions or, you know, it could be your blood uh, glucose from the automated meter or it could be an output from the electronic medical record. It could be anything that any system or person wants to send to any other system or person. And once you get the ubiquity of of, of having anything, um, any message of any type of any size, email can't handle x-rays, for example, they're too big, uh, that can go between any kind of system and any other system. Uh, and if the receiving system or the receiving person doesn't need to sign up in advance or know anything about it, now you've got an ability to make this thing actually work. Um, and that's the, all, all of the things I just mentioned are things that Data Motion has done and are operating today. And, and that's why we think that, that there's a real chance that we can fill the gap in getting push messaging working to complement the pull stuff that's already working with electronic medical records. So as, as more and more patients move from the hospital systems, you know, whether it's home health care or into, um, you know, more clinic type settings that are outside the hospital system but especially thinking about the home health care and, and also the care team sometimes now including daughters or sons of elderly parents um, does your system then allow all those folks to be involved also and be able to be part of this push pull uh, message yeah, and that's you know the health care is moving towards uh, patient centric care 
uh, or we call it person-centric. Uh, we've got a guy named uh, Dennis Robbins also on our advisory board who's proven to everybody that we're only patients, you know, one hour a year, most of us. <laughs> the rest of the time we're regular people, but we still care about our health and and uh, we still need to communicate. And it's very common for people who are, uh, you know, heavy duty patients who are in hospitals or have cancer or have uh, end of life issues or whatever. It's very common for those people to, for the major communication to occur with someone else, the daughter or the son or the you know, the the brother or whoever's uh, spending a lot more time helping mom with her issue. Uh, and so if this is going to work, it needs to work where delegation works properly so that the mother who is sick uh, can trust her daughter or son or other people can get the right messages back and forth, can help get them to the right appointments, can help get the right, you know, a third of all the cost of, of tests like x-rays and uh uh, uh, blood tests and EKGs and things like that, a third of them are duplicated because the second office, doctor, hospital, whatever, doesn't have a copy of the first. <laughs> just just stupid, stupid, simple things yeah. like that. Of course. You know? And uh, so, and not only is it expensive, it's also painful. You have to make up to the extra trip and go get the extra x-ray or make the extra travel for the other appointment. And, and uh, you know, there's a, a lot of uh, morbidity that comes from some of that as well. Yeah, the room and for error. The daughter mm -hmm. knows this is silly. You know, the daughter says, you just had that test. <laughs> Why can't we use that one? But getting the first test sent to the second place is the hard part. And, right. and so the idea is to get the, the person who cares, the daughter, the son, the mother, the patient themselves, whoever it is, to put them in charge of the medical record and put them in charge and give them the authority to send the stuff back and forth. Hospitals are worried that if a patient gets involved in sending a record from hospital A to hospital B, the patient might erase the little part about the alcoholism or whatever you know, in the record, and therefore it wouldn't have a, be a high fidelity record. It wouldn't have good provenance. They talk about. Our system makes it so that the patient feels like they're sending the record from, they're forwarding it to the next place. But what they're really doing is putting in a request for it to be sent from the original place to the new place through mm -hmm. the data motion system. So the record still maintains the provenance from the first hospital or doctor's office or whatever it is. Um, but the patient still can be uh, the one who orchestrates getting the right messages, the right documents, the right x-rays or whatever to and from whoever needs them, including the people at home or the people on Meals and Wheels or the people who are bringing the new mask for the CPAP machine or whatever. So in essence, it's patient or person uh, safe, right? And, patient, and patient, yeah. patient, patient safe, you know, you know, like a lid is uh, on top of a prescription drug bottle. It's child proof or patient proof that's what i was looking for <laughs> but that's a that's a better way to go right and still giving them feel of control but not total control so I'm well and there's nothing to prevent the patient from writing a note uh along with the x-ray or along with the official record that adds some clarification to it the beauty of the system that, that data motion provides is that something might be sent to a hospital and uh, the the way these things are set up, it will wind up in the right medical record. It might not wind up in exactly the place in the you know if if, if uh, it might wind up as a note attached to the medical record. But the clinicians at the other end will be able to see it and find it and read it, whatever it is, um, and without anybody doing anything new in the receiving place. So I'm I'm curious, you know, does your system uh, complement or replace the concept of a personal health record? And you know, we're kind of coming down to the last minute of this segment, but I'd be really curious what your views are on that. Well, I think personal health record is the future. The question is how we get there, right? Uh, you know, right now the record belongs, or in the past, has belonged to the doctor or the hospital, and they're very resistant to making it feel like it belongs to the patient. But in fact, it makes perfect sense for the patient to be uh, not only the owner but in control. Uh, and and so the PHR or the personal health record is the way to go. Uh, we think of our system as it, it could be used as a personal health record all by itself. It would work that way. But what we really think is that data motion uh, is in, is in the business to empower uh, you know, hundreds of other entities to make like this DocSnap company. They've got a personal health record. If you like their app, our system at DataMotion powers it. 
Um, but if you like somebody else's method, our system can power that as well. And so we look at ourselves as infrastructure that makes all this stuff work. Although if you want to log into a web portal that we provide, you could certainly use it as a personal health record all by itself. Okay, very cool. I agree with you too. I, I think personal health records are the future. I think those who tried it, Microsoft, Google, maybe came just a little they were before their time, a little too early. The system wasn't ready to accept it yet. But maybe we can you know, dig in a little bit deeper or if you can stay on with us for one more segment. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, before we take our break, uh, this hour is brought to you by Doctor's Choice. It's the coffee that loves you. And, you know, we were talking about the fact that it is so uniquely roasted through a process that is called or known as infrared heating. Uh, and this infrared roasting process uh, creates such a, a unique bean in that it pr protects the bean in many ways from the uh, all of the natural flavonoids and phenols uh, that the coffee cherry bean has before it goes through a traditional roasting process and gets burnt off, Doctor's Choice prefers to keep it preserved for you because of its many health benefits. So you can go to doctorschoicecoffee.coffee and learn why uh, there are other really great facts why infrared heating uh, is so much better for you than traditional fire roasting of coffee. All right, well, Doctor's Choice, it's the coffee that loves you. We'll be right back on Morning Coffee and Health. Oh, your coffee smells so good. I made you a cup, too. You know I'm trying to cut back. I know, but this is Doctor's Choice, the new healthy coffee I told you about. I haven't felt any acid reflux. Okay, where's the cream? No creamer for me. So smooth, no bitterness to overcome. Wait, you always fluff up your coffee. I'm telling you, just try it, and you'll see for yourself. Well? Wow, it's really good. Where'd you get this? Just ordered it online. Super easy. It's really smooth and no bitterness. That's because they start with an award-winning bean from Panama and use infrared roasting that doesn't create carcinogens like traditional roasting does. And it has added healthy ingredients. So no jitters, no afternoon crash. Doctor's Choice. I like it. And still no acid reflux. Doctor's Choice Coffee. Great smooth taste with no bitterness. A healthier choice for your body. Order some today at doctorschoice.coffee. Wait, did he just say dot coffee? Yes, sir. Doctorschoice.coffee. It's the coffee that loves you. Hi, I'm Mark Stoneman, president of WNAV Audiovisual. WNAV Audiovisual has provided the Twin Cities with audiovisual services for over 30 years, and that includes clients of all sizes, from installation services in churches to large corporate meetings in ballrooms. We provide the equipment and expertise for all types of meetings. At WNAV Audiovisual, we say that your meeting is our business. We know every meeting is important. So we are here to assist you providing audiovisual equipment such as projector screens, sound systems, lighting, draping, live streaming, and professional technicians. We know you have a lot on your plate, and we want to take the audiovisual element off that plate and take care of all those needs for you from the planning portion all the way to the end. WNAV Audiovisual, where your meeting is our business. Find us online at wnav-video.com. That's wnav-video.com. This is Don Stevens of mercyships.org with the Mercy Minute. Volunteers of different nationalities and ages serve on board our hospital ship, the Africa Mercy. Listen to Amy, our assistant purser, describe how her bucket list was completed by a mercy moment. I was a teenager when I went on my first mission trip. I started saying, if I'm still single when I turn 30, I'm going to move to Africa and work in an orphanage. Years later, I learned about mercy ships. I applied to serve. One day, I was in an orphanage in Guinea holding a two-week-old baby. I suddenly realized, I'm 30, single, living in Africa, and I'm in an orphanage. His plan for me is so much more amazing than I could have ever imagined. Add Mercy Moments to your bucket list by going to our website and clicking on Volunteer. This is Don Stevens of MercyShips.org, bringing hope and healing to the world's forgotten poor.
Welcome back to Morning Coffee and Health. Uh, you're listening to Paul and Daphna Thompson, your hosts of the show. And on today's program, Innovation and Trends in Healthcare, we've got a great guest from Data Motion. Uh, Doctor's Choice is the sponsor of this hour. And did you know it's a cause coffee? It's an innovative coffee, not only, but it has a cause and an effect. It actually sends proceeds of its uh, products, sales products, uh, to Mercy Ships that gives free health care to the very poorest of the poor. You can read more about that by going to doctorschoice.coffee. Thanks for staying with us, Dr. Tibbet. Uh, this has been a great conversation. You know, and we, we know we have um, uh, many healthcare professionals who listen to this show. Uh, you know, how would somebody find out more about Data Motion if they've become very interested as they've been listening to this to maybe consider this as a solution that would work with their existing you know, systems? Well, obviously, Datamotion has uh, got a website. We've got datamotion.com and also datamotionhealth.com. Either one will uh, work. Um, and uh, uh, you know, this is a pretty straightforward world out there. The people who are in healthcare IT uh, generally are struggling with their health information exchanges or their electronic medical records or figuring out how to make their patient portals work. And in the in the world of uh, health IT, we talk about yet another portal. You know, they, everybody rolls their eyes and says, "Oh my God, we're going to make these people go to yet another portal." Whether that's making doctors go to yet another portal, yes, <laughs> making patients go to yet another portal. All of us are getting pretty tired of going to 12 different places to get one thing done. Uh, and so, you know, if we can figure out how to how to get things put push to you instead of making you go somewhere to get them whether that's an app or whether that's an email or whether that's something else that's the that's the theory of of, uh, of this new infrastructure that uh, data motions leading you know we data motions already installed in uh, something over a thousand hospitals in America though most of them don't know it uh, because uh, 60 uh, something uh, electronic medical record products already use the data motion infrastructure in order to meet the regulatory requirements that they were forced to meet. Uh, so the, the uh, virtually all electronic medical records, certainly in the top you know 20, all use uh, this same infrastructure and are completely compatible out of the box. They either use, they use our code or they use code that's compatible with it by default. Uh, so the, the good news is that for people in health information technology, this is kind of a quick step that can be done easily. Uh, you, you, you can turn on uh, messaging, and including very complex structured or very simple unstructured messaging. could be just things like notes or pictures or a snapshot. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people think that the most useful part of a medical record is the handwritten note <laughs> that somebody made or a photograph of a handwritten note that somebody else made. Uh, and those things are called unstructured data, and they tend to be very useful pieces of information. They're not searchable by uh, computers very well, but if they're available, it's, it's sort of a picture is worth a thousand words. So the ability to handle both structured and unstructured data and get back to the subtleties that clinicians uh, thrive on. You know, the doctors, what makes a doctor a doctor isn't so much that they know how to deal with diabetes or hypertension or, or, or whatever the disease is, but the particular nuance that each patient has. My diabetic, hypertensive, uh, you know, uh, 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 person has a slightly different problem and doesn't work with this medicine as well as that medicine and has problems with, you know, something else. And it's the subtlety, it's the nuance that isn't on a pick list, it isn't on a checkbox that is really what the clinicians are working through, uh, you know, the, what's called now precision. And, and uh, th that all gets carried through uh, structured structure data. That's, that's sort of the briefing that one clinician gives another or the story that goes from a patient to a doctor. And that's easy to get lost in, in structured big database sort of oriented methods. And that's that's another reason that we want to sort of turn you know enable all of this for the for the world of personalized health. Dr. Tippett, you know this is all very fascinating and great news to all of us, no matter if we're a patient listening or a provider, clinician somewhere. Um, but how does data motion health technologies, as you're talking about them, play into the health information network, the HIN, and even the NHIN, the National Health Information Network? What is what is your affiliation there? How does that how does that work? 
Right. Yeah, the, the NHIN, or the Health Information Network, is composed of these health information exchanges that hospitals are supposed to share their data with and doctors' offices are supposed to. Doctors' and offices and hospitals are often disinclined to send all their information to some other place for all kinds of reasons. There's technical reasons, there's market reasons, um, but they, they're generally not terribly interested in putting all their information somewhere else. Um, and uh, it's expensive and, and potentially even uh, hard on competition. With, uh, and uh, so what, uh, what data motion is, all of those systems uh, speak these protocols, one of which is this NHIN direct protocol. And data motion is one of the health information service providers that those entities all rely on to provide these protocols. <laughs> it's a big, it's a big uh, community of technology companies that have to work together to make it work at all. And so uh, Data Motion is the so-called HISP, Health Information Service Provider, for uh, uh, hundreds of hospitals, for thousands of uh, organizations, um, and for a whole bunch of these things called health information exchanges. Thank you. Earlier, we were talking about personal health records, you know, and, and that having that patient at the center of their records and having some control over the sharing of those records, I believe, makes a lot of sense. But there's also this concept of just patient empowerment, which is something completely different. And so what are your views on how do we uh, empower those patients and, and really get them more engaged? And, you know, is some of the parts of the data motion story helping in that area also? Yeah, you know, a lot of studies have shown that if you give access to patients to their medical record through a portal in a hospital, that they generally don't use it. Uh, and, and so a lot of people say patients don't want access to their records. They don't want to be empowered. And this is sort of the other side of the coin. I absolutely don't believe that. I think that's like uh, if you told somebody with a teletype machine and a mainframe that they didn't like word processors. Uh, <laughs> uh, but then once we showed them a word processor that looked like Microsoft Word or, uh, you know, uh, email that looked like email, and all of a sudden people found their own benefits from it because it was easy and it worked, it really boils down to, to ease of use and suitability to the task. If we make things easy enough and we really build these systems around the patient's needs, and at the same time enable uh, security and privacy and interoperability with all the systems that are already in place. Um, you know, we think it's that combination of things. And there's a whole bunch of things. Most systems, for example, can't handle big files like x-rays. Uh, email can't do that. Couldn't even conceive of handling even a simple ankle x-ray. Uh, certainly not an MRI. Uh, EKGs and other things are all digital, but, but they're very difficult to handle in uh, the typical systems that we all use, especially between, uh, you know, patients. We don't have a way to view an EKG or an X-ray. Uh, and so the, you know, the, the point, data motion uh, and our system is organized around making big and small work, structured and unstructured work, providing viewers so that uh, uh, people can actually see what the thing looks like, even if they're receiving it through a web browser uh, or through some other email system, uh, making ways so that, uh, you know, one electronic medical record software wants the, is slightly different format than some other one. And uh, none of them are the same. There's hundreds of different products that, that hospitals use, and yeah. none of them share the same data format. So somebody like Data Motion needs to be in the middle that does the translation between all these things and adds that layer of ease and, and, uh, and handles all the odd cases and at the same time does privacy and security and identity uh, well. Dr. Tippett, maybe in, in 30 seconds before we wrap up the end of our show today, uh, any tips for uh, the health system, uh, anybody who's part of the health system, um, from a technology perspective, what they can do to embrace more of this push uh, that, you're, that you're promoting or advocating? Yeah, I just think that people have, uh, the clinicians and, and health, uh, there's been such a story in the last 15 or 20 years about wouldn't it be great if all the data was in one place and when the unconscious patient rolls into the emergency room, the doctor could simply look it up and find out that they had diabetes or find out that they had a seizure disorder or find out the key missing element real quickly. You know, th that story has been so profound that everybody in research and everywhere else 
uh, has sort of been chasing after it. Um, you know, I think if we get back to the notion of people sending things to each other, uh, including things like notes and dictations and x-rays and, and pictures of vaccination cards and whatever, and just embrace this notion, the infrastructure is now capable. The okay. rules are capable. We don't need any new laws or anything. Thank you so much, Dr. Tippett. It's been ha- wonderful having you on our show today. You're listening to Morning Coffee and Health, and we'll see you tomorrow.